So Daniel is from Nigeria and he is currently a PhD student in civil engineering at Auburn University in Alabama. And he was helping us remotely this summer, uh, which I think was is a challenge for the project that, that we had uh, we had lined up. We've been really fortunate to have him helping us um, calculate product carbon footprints, which uh, was extremely challenging given that the data was uh, not easy to gather. Um, he was able to come to our plants for one day. And in that day, I was really impressed with how much he was able to absorb and learn about our manufacturing processes. And it was a good opportunity, I think, for him to uh, meet in person some of the people that he would be um, asking for help in terms of gathering the information since he wasn't able to, to be there himself. So I think that that was, that was great and uh, a big ask for, for one day. So he's done a fabulous job working independently and he's been very um, methodical and well-organized and that approach I think is gonna be, is it has been extremely valuable and will really make it so that we're able to build on his work going forward. So with that, I will let Daniel uh, talk about his project. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, for the introduction. Uh, as she has uh, related, Daniel, a uh, sustainability fellow for Watting Industries. Uh, next slide. Uh, so, Watting Industries is a recognized leader in the manufacturing of high quality materials for a variety of industry like the footwear and apparel, food, medical, and construction industry. So the project, Product Carbon Footprint, which I'm working on this, I worked on this somehow was important because for wanting to address its full climate impact, what it needs to calculate carbon emissions associated with their product. And this provides them the opportunity to improve the sustainability of the supply chain and manufacturing processes. And on my right is the approach I use for calculating life cycle carbon accounting for each product, specifically a calculated crowd to gate life cycle carbon inventory for products manufactured by what in industry. So next I'll be sharing some results from my work this summer. Next slide. Yeah, so this is a calculation sample. So on my left is the process map, which highlights the stages in the life cycle of this particular product. And on my right is the carbon footprint, the total inventory for this particular product. And just a quick insight into these results. It, the main driver for the product carbon footprint is the production of raw material one, as shown in the charts, and followed by the transportation of the same material, which shows that overall raw material one is the major contributor to this product's carbon footprint. And as shown in the slide with the red sector, sorry, with the green sector, we have the on-site production, which is only contributing about 2% to the carbon footprint, which really shows that the major chunk of the emissions is coming from the upstream carbon emission, which we call the scope three, the raw material and the transportation to site. So next slide. Yeah, so I just want to give like a quick highlight into what I've done overall this summer. Firstly, I calculated crowd to get life cycle carbon inventory for over two products, uh, which help in identifying emission hotspots, which are materials and processes that are major contributor to the product carbon footprint, and which provide the opportunity to propose emission reduction targets, which are achievable and measurable overall enabling us to improve sustainability at water industries. So these life cycle carbon accounting approach helps will also help water in tracking the performance of their business units regarding sustainability. And in the future, we help in publicly reporting the, the carbon footprint for their product, which is a requirement of 
sustainability standards in the nation. So, and which is a good experience. And for me personally, this project has really taken me a step higher in my sustainability career because I've get gain experience and I'm always sharpening my skills in calculating carbon footprint for products, especially with complicated raw materials. And in closing, I would like to appreciate UNH Sustainability Institute, Watson Industries, Mementos, Shea, Whaley, and Ale Cassidy for the support throughout this program because I want to be able to achieve what I achieved even with the limitation of working remotely, if not for their support. So thank you everyone for listening to my presentation and I appreciate your comments and questions. Thank you, Daniel. A couple questions we have for you include, um, since raw material production is the largest source of emissions from your analysis, how can Worthen reduce some of these emissions? Yeah, we have one thing can reduce some of it because from my calculations, major contributions for this raw material, especially with the transportation being a chunk, is if these materials can be sourced locally, not involving maybe shipping, because some material manufacturers could be overseas. So trying to get locally sourced materials or substitutes will help in reducing some of these upstream emissions and also for the product, for the raw material production itself, if we can look into manufacturers that are using more energy efficient and more sustainable approach in producing these products that would help to in minimizing the upstream carbon emission. Yeah, there are certainly several avenues that they can start to work on to, to reduce these emissions. Yeah. And then following your work, what are some of their Worthen's next steps? Okay, so the next step now, because for my program, I able to achieve like just two plus products. Um, hopefully if I can achieve the third one. So the next step right now would be, which is more in a business unit. So more like, which with my process, I'll kind of set up a procedure, which is easily understandable for someone to take over what I've been doing in terms of calculating footprint for other products. So the next step will be maybe calculating footprint for other products, which will help them having a full database of the carbon footprint for all your product. And the next step two will be publicly reporting these emissions because that will help in terms of the green picture of the company and even bringing more customers that they are really more looking into sustainability and that will give what in an edge in that kind of space. So that's what I would say. Well, great, seems like they have lots of work to do, but you were able to get it all started. Thank yeah. you, Daniel. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, everyone.